hello hello welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new my name is Corey, and today we are back with another design with me video um first of all let me let you know it is literally five o'clock in the morning 5 11. i've been up and at this desk since 4 30 setting up to film last night i tried to film this i had no interest in it at all and so here i am in the morning suddenly in the mood to design my home office is stationed in my living room of course and they are doing construction outside so i'm on a microphone but let's say the audio does happen to pick up they start around seven o'clock so that being said, I have about 90 minutes again or two hours to get this going. Just like last time, I did a design with me before I gave myself 90 minutes. The design was not sufficient and obviously I need more time but I do love a challenge so let's do it. Before we get started, I have a feeling this video will be much longer than my other videos. Maybe not because I edit the hell out of these videos. I mean I remove a lot of stuff. But regardless, please go ahead and get you some snacks, a beverage. I don't know who watches YouTube videos without something to eat and drink but please do so last time i did a redesign today no redesign happening here today i'm going to design something totally from scratch this will be a made up company so i called a couple people and asked them for ideas on what type of company i just need i needed a starting place on what type of company i should make up to design some brand identity for and we landed on hair care of course black women right and so <laughs> But I opened up Notion and this video is not sponsored but let me tell you I recently got access to Notion's AI software which I believe is still in beta and I let the AI write my brief for me so you all get to see what the power of AI has done to me today okay so well last night my mother gave me the name Prest so that is the name of the company we're calling it Prest um, this is my brief here I have a bottom line which is basically the one sentence version of what this product or what this brand is I have the brand story which is the longer version a little more insight into what this company is and why it exists I included a target audience for the sake of this video we're only including the very basics this is bare bones this is not what a full brief would look like but these are some of the high level things that I can use to design from so target audience I only did a primary audience and then we have some competitors here the competitive advantage that I identified and the tone and feel that we are going for slash want people to experience with this brand. Um, so the bottom line, Pressed is an essential hair care brand for black people who enjoy exploring the magic and versatility of their hair, whether natural or relaxed, but don't want to sacrifice health. Simply put, my hair can do anything, except I have to be concerned about damaging it anytime I want to try that anything. And so this hair care line is supposed to help me stress less about that and experiment more. Brand story. Black hair has always been a symbol of culture, a form of expression, an experience, and ritual. It's a time for bonding, a time to share stories, and a time to express yourself. Press celebrates this tradition. Press celebrates this tradition, allowing other girl. Can you read? Press celebrates this tradition, allowing our customers to create a look that is uniquely their own without the fear of damage. We want to. We want to provide solutions that enable our customers to explore the beauty and diversity of black hair while also keeping it healthy and looking great. Our goal is to create a brand that resonates with our target audience, allowing them to take control of their hair and explore without limitations. Our products are designed to empower our customers with simple and effective solutions to keep their hair healthy and looking great, no matter the style that they want to achieve. We want to provide an experience where a fear of damage does not overpower a desire for self-expression. This may be a little repetitive and redundant, but please keep in mind a human did not write this. I gave a starting phrase and um, the AI did it for me. I added a few words here and there, but the AI mostly wrote this and I think it did a phenomenal job. It got what I was thinking out onto paper. Great. I will probably in the future do a full video on how I use AI appropriately in business and in life. It helps me a lot with brainstorming and especially with content creation. So. I'll share that later. So our target audience is primarily black women, 18 to 40. That is a large age range, but we're talking about, 
hair care here and um if you are a black woman you understand <laughs> our competitors i've identified miel pattern beauty and olaplex these are brands that black women do use especially miel you already know what's been going on lately and i hope it is pronounced miel i don't i know people say miel this looks like miel to me so i'm going with miel i think a lot of us use olaplex as a restoration system which brings me to the competitive advantage that uh pressed is focused on the versatility of hair like it's directly speaking to the fact that we want you to be able to not have to worry about low manipulation and things like that and then and, and because of that they provide proactive solutions versus reactive solutions another advantage that I, that is not listed here that i would like to acknowledge just for the sake of my made-up brand is that it would be at an affordable price point and we also tapped into the nostalgia aspect so in the brand story where we talk about black hair being a ritual and it's a time for storytelling and all these things the experience of having black hair is much greater and deeper than just the hair follicles themselves and so pressed would like to tap into that and really tug at your heartstrings because i know personally when i think about getting my hair done I have all five senses are triggered. I can think of the smell of the grease. I could think of the the feel of the, the oils on my scalp. I think of the environments I would be sitting in, sitting on the hard floor, pretending the pillow under my butt was doing anything for me while my mother braided my hair. All those things are things I think about with black hair. Um, I would like that to be ingrained in this brand. So the tone and feel that we're going for again nostalgic we want people to feel empowered we want it to feel warm as in like you know warm and fuzzy inside and confident that is what we have for our brief while we won't be researching a brand since this one does not exist we can research their competitors so i'm going to go ahead and look up miel organics and for the sake of this video i am only concerned right now with the branding and how it looks on the shelf this is a product and so a huge part of the brand identity will be how well you can make it stand out on a shelf. You imagine walking into Target and seeing a huge, I mean, maybe not huge for our products, but you walk into Target and you see a shelf full of products, full of labels, and I personally gravitate towards things that look really good. For example, the Pattern Beauty. Oh, I spelled beauty wrong. <laughs> When I see Pattern Beauty on the shelves, there's no, you just can't ignore this. This is really good branding. It's illustration based, it's bold, it's yellow. Who doesn't love yellow? Yellow makes you feel happy. This makes me feel, it even feels like the boldness of the illustrations, they just feel so juicy. Like that's how my hair is gonna feel. I used the word juicy in the last video. I need to stop. This is dope. So I really like how bold this is. I really like how, um, you can kind of see yourself on the packaging. Um, you can see a, a hair type. The hair is wavy, curly, whatever the case may be. There are different ways to utilize those brand elements. Back to Miel. Miel's branding reminds me of something, and this is not no no shade, no tea. This reminds me like their the icon that they're using reminds me of a stock image. It's going for the same. It honestly has the same exact. I don't know if you can see that, but that little icon next to the brand name. It has the same exact look as pattern. An illustration of a woman using negative space. They both do the same thing. Pattern does it much better, in my opinion. Um, Miel's looks more like a stock image, but it works for what it is. I'm not gonna lie. As many I have a bunch of Miel products in my. Um, bathroom right now and i have never noticed that icon until right now miel isn't a product that stood out to me on the shelves at all the i purchased this just as a result of needing to try everything on the shelf because you know i'm always being promised that every single product is going to make my hair grow to the back of my kneecap so i'm going to buy every single one just to see we already know what olaplex looks like it looks like nothing but that works for them this look and feel is so clean and like no bs it looks professional and i think that's what helps them a lot i see this in the store i feel like i'm getting salon grade i mean it probably is salon grade but i'm, I'm getting salon grade because of that there's an aspect of luxury to it and therefore it can have that price point imagine how much are these they're 30 dollars, i believe i own olaplex as well the big bottles not the small ones out my mind but the <laughs> big bottles cost what 30 dollars, something like that each imagine Miel having this product and it's $30. I don't, it does, it's not giving that. 
pattern as well. A pattern could be at a higher price point, I'm not gonna lie. Pattern is kind of given that. So that's just my general research on the look and feel. Um, what I gather from this is that I want to stay away. I want to avoid putting illustrations on the package. I don't want that. I don't want to get too close to what Miel and Pattern are doing, but especially Pattern. I don't want to get too close to that, though I do really, really love their branding. Um, and I don't want to go the Olaplex route because I don't want to give off a luxury. This is not a luxury brand. This is soul food. This is home cooking. This is kitchen beautician, but as healthy as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Typically in this project, I do start with a mood board. Last time I did not as a redesign, but we are starting from scratch. And so I do want to source some form of inspiration. And so I'm going to head to Pinterest. I must say, I don't talk this much in real life. So consider yourself blessed. Um, all right, we're on Pinterest. Let's search. Let's search black hair. Let's just see what comes up. Black hair. Again, I want... Oh wow, I have never seen this. Shout out to Pinterest. Search hair by pattern is awesome. I should have said black women hair, understandable, because Ariana, what are you doing here? Black, black hair aesthetic. I'm tired. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like stuff like this, this I love. Um, while I'm grabbing these pictures, I'm noticing certain color palettes and things that I like as well. So you get the gist, you know, like these are images that I really like. I'm not going to create a formal mood board because, you know, I only gave myself two hours or whatever time I gave myself. With this brand, I want to see myself feeling the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Not actually being there, but feeling it. I was born in the 90s, and so seeing certain images reminds me of what I used to see when I was younger. And I do enjoy seeing a modern version, a version of like me today, as if I was this age back then. Our max target audience was about 10 years old in 1990. So what I'm noticing here is the colors themselves as well as the treatments on the photos it's uh, there's a lot of sepia tones a lot of orange a lot of yellow um browns of course i really like it i love the colors here it's orange and blue essentially but a muted version of orange and blue i love that um same here you know same idea the the it's the background is nearing sepia. There's a lot of orange and blue here. Um, this is giving me a bunch of ideas for color palette. So I think I have enough on the move board. Let's move on to starting the logo. already know where I like to go for fonts that is Envato Elements and Envato Elements if you don't know of course again this is not sponsored but Envato Elements is a website where you can get literally anything to supplement or help you create your project so they have as you can see style video video templates music sound effects graphic templates graphics um, so when I use mock-ups I get them from here I get some of them from here as well I'm heading to fonts Right, let's start in the vintage area we're not necessarily going vintage but you know we don't i mean i kind of like this bistro i love this what i like about bistro is it has a little bit of that vintage type of feel um this type could easily be manipulated to fit what i want I can see here that a lot of these characters would fit well into each other um, and I also like that they have alternate um, characters as well. I like the thickness of it, the boldness of it, I'm downloading it, enough said. Whatever I imagine in my head when I look at these um, sketches, 
if I see it in real life, I'm getting it. I have sketches in here from previously. This, these are from yesterday. I just started this field notes. Um, shout out to field notes, by the way. If you watch my other videos, you know what time it is. I started out doing one of these concepts myself, trying my hand at hand lettering and um, drawing it out on my iPad. Didn't like it, but when I was sourcing fonts, I did see one that was similar to what I had in my head when I sketched this out and I was able to manipulate it to fit more like this sketch so that I can get as close to my idea as possible. That's why you do this. When I sketch things out, I did a lot of script as well. I will be avoiding the, the block looking um, fonts. I did do something that was kind of bubbly like that, so I'll download that. I also want this vintage culture font. This looks interesting as well. Um, it, it looks a little too comical. I don't know if that's the word I want to use. There's so many fonts in the world. It's actually insane. This, I love. I just love how thick it is. It is a script, but it's also giving handwritten. Love that. See, a lot of these look similar. And I'm going to download them and we'll see what the difference is. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Woo, let's get to, let's do ten. Oh, look at this. I like this. Just like the first one I was talking about or the one I was talking about earlier, I can see these characters fit really well into each other. I love, I love um, fonts where the characters hug each other. Like the A fits nestled into the end and the eye fits perfectly between it like i just like that so i'm downloading that one more is there one that's like wonder pleasure now this is not at all what i was imagining for this typeface i also think this does look a little juvenile and our target went up to 40. Now, I'm almost 30. I know, I don't look like it at all, huh? Thank you. I still would think something like this was targeted for me. I wouldn't download it. I don't even love it. I just think it would be interesting to try out. I'm gonna go ahead and type in pressed over and over in all of my fonts. While we're here, um, if you are a designer, let me know in the comments what part of your process looks different from mine. That was vintage culture. Vintage town was another one. Yeah, the vintage town. The vintage town has an extruded version too. What's next? Groovy. I called this typeface something else before and then it downloaded and now it's called Groovy. First of all, I already know if I want to judge this fairly, this kerning has to get tightened up. Like I'm just not looking at it like this. This typeface is not, no, I don't want it. <gasps> I like that one. Okay, so this is what we're working with. I can tell you right now. We can do an easy process of elimination. I hate this. I think I hate this too. And this process I like to go through as quickly as a pos not as quickly as possible, but like, you know, trust your gut. This, let me zoom in. These E's, they just make me uncomfortable. I don't know what it is. They're so like top heavy. I just, they're, I'm uncomfortable. Boom. This, I don't know why, what did I see in this font that made me go, yeah, this is the one. Bye. Um, I'm not super in love with this one. Wait, why did I delete? I know I deleted it. I don't like it like this, so delete. But I do like it extruded, so that one's going to stay. Yeah, I wouldn't know what to do with this, so delete. You already know, morally vintage fire. This is similar, right? I don't like that these E's are not closed. 
and they're so similar. I don't like that the letters aren't closed. So if I'm choosing between the two, I'm gonna choose morally. So delete. And then this last one, that one's not too bad. And this one, I'm not super mad at. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, let's keep that there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make a new artboard and play around with my favorite. Obviously, I like it as is. Why I like this one, the nesting, number one. Two, it looks like the nesting itself looks like um, hair on a head. And three, the weight of it. Now, I do want things to fit a little better. So doing something like this, the only thing about it is that I can't do that as well with these back-to-back -back S's but I can attempt something. I wanted to include some type of movement in this because um, it's hair, like, you know, it just makes sense. I do also want to see about stacking these. So if I take, let me copy this. If I were to take these and fit them, stack them on top of this, and fit these in better. Mm, it's not working as well. I'm not gonna talk much more. I think it's time for some music, so I will be right back. It is 6 48 in the morning it's been some time I'm obviously not finishing at 7 I am satisfied with where I'm at so let me explain what I did I as I was playing around with the characters um, originally I left the R and the E like this nested in each other and felt like it felt like um, hair on a head but then the more I looked at it it more so felt like a person under a hooded dryer so I wanted to give a little tiny bit more of that so I extended the bottom of the R to seat the E. Um, and then this, the more I look at it, I'm reading press. I really don't care, but this is going to be like, this will be our primary logo up here. Um, I bought the kerning in super tight. I gave the, the letters some movement, shifting them, rotating them, etc. And then this one at first i kept this on the side this is the, the very first um alternate mark i made i kept this on the side because if it was originally fitting together better than this one with the extended r but i think i got this one to fit much better so we can get rid of this and so here we are with a logo and a sub mark um obviously our logo is one word and so this would be primary fitting wherever it can fit in its horizontal shape and its long horizontal shape and then this one would be like on our instagram and like that now i'm going to look at some color palettes so like i said i didn't do this process previously but this is also something that i do i have shared this on my instagram um if you look in my highlights 
in, I think in the process highlight, you'll see um, how I've selected colors for this particular illustration that I did and it was this exact same method. So I'm gonna download some of the pictures that I saved and we will pull from there. Okay. Um, so I'm going to pull all of those images into um, Illustrator. Seeing a strong color theme here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a bunch of shapes, squares, circles, whatever you wanna do. I like circles. And then um, you take your eyedropper tool, you select the circle, take your eyedropper tool, which is I, and you grab colors from the images. And then press V to get back to your selector and press I and select something over and over and over. Um, that's essentially how I pull, like I really like that color I just pulled. Let's get some of that. This is an easy way to me to pick colors because it's done for you almost like we already picked the inspiration i know what i liked when i saw it there we go that's a good one Okay, now from here, I have a bunch of color swatches. I offer it like these two. I like the idea of a purple being included. Let's say these are some of the colors I'm working with. Let's say this is our For Now palette. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this artboard. And this is where I'll start introducing the color. And now I'm going to grab from my color palette and start seeing what works well together. Um, same shortcuts, essentially. I do like the tonal stuff. Um, I don't like this purple. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me choose my final palette here. I'm gonna go ahead and make these mock-ups and you can watch and then we'll come back and look at the final brand. Outside of the club. 
also I have created um, a few mock-ups, a couple ads, a rollout essentially. And um, without further ado, here is Pressed. Thank you all so much for watching if you made it this far. I hope you all are watching um, these longer videos while you're doing something else. I think it's kind of like co-working. If you ask me, you know, put me on the background while you work. But um, if you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. You already know the drill. Um, share this with your cousin and them. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.